Welcome to the Critical Media Studies Podcast. We're your hosts, Mike Rapici and Barry Falk. Dr. Rapici, it's Dr. Falk on Zoom. Barry, how are you? <laughs> Ready? It's good to see you. Red, Red, it's good to see you. Good to talk to you. Um, and good to talk to you about critical media studies. Uh, what's up on the agenda today? How, how about I sort of um, set Let's the table do a little, very briefly? A little very scorched briefly. earth, Barry. A little, a little scorched, scorched earth. earth. Uh, we're talking about the slim volume uh, by Jonathan Crary, uh, a friend of the show. Yep. I think it's fair to say it. Um, well, one of our first podcasts, I think, one of mm -hmm. our first podcast topics, um, we read John McCrary's previous salvo about media culture, 24-7, um, and he had he's back with a new book called Scorched Earth uh, that, well, we'll talk a little bit more about it, but he's back to talking about... Um, He's back talking about media studies, but if it, if it's possible, um, the tone is even more apocalyptic. I urgent. think it's urgent, certainly, as we'll discuss when we get to this. Um, the tone, uh, his critical tone, his criticisms, uh, it's even it's at a higher pitch even um, than even in 24-7, where he was largely critical of the claims that the internet was increasing solidarity and a new source of community, um, things like that. So this is his latest uh, polemic. Mm -hmm. he, I even want to call it, and I think he does, a broadside or a pamphlet. In other words, a small book as opposed to the scholarly pretensions, there was a lot of stuff about history, mm -hmm. recent military history, but a lot of things about history and how we measure time in his previous study. But in this book, it seems like the scholar, I mean, he's still a scholar. He is still referencing basically the philosophical canon and, as well as recent media studies theorists. But he's um, but he's wearing his learning a little bit lightly and because of the urgency with which he is, I think, launching his critique. So we're going to talk about this book. Yeah. And um, I th we had uh, well, we, we've identified a section very early in the book where he basically lays out the um, broad outline of the arguments he's going to make. And so the plan is to read through uh, a decent sized and fairly dense paragraph. And then we're going to go back through and unpack mm -hmm. it. So um, mm -hmm. this is, we'll, we'll go through this with the, uh, the realization that, it, you know, listeners don't have the text in front of them. So we're going to unpack it first, but or, we're going to unpack it, but go through it. Uh, once first, just to give mm -hmm. the overview uh, of the argument. So, and uh, and let me add this to it: the paragraph we chose is at the very beginning, and it does seem to be um, very much a table setter, in the sense that he seems to be really um, the the whole book, the whole of this this short book seems to be unpacking. Uh, and sort of holding true on the aims that he articulates in this paragraph. So this this is kind of the thesis statement plus, this is. I think, the paragraph. So to begin, he says, excuse me, this book is aligned with a tradition of social pamphleteering that aims to give voice to what is experienced in common, to what is known or partly known in common, but is negated by an overpowering barrage of messages that insist on the unalterability of our administered lives. Many people on a daily basis have a visceral grasp, excuse me, visceral grasp of the immiseration of their lives and hopes, but may only have a hesitant awareness of how widely their insights are shared with others. My goal here is not to present a nuanced theoretical analysis, but 
in a time of emergency to affirm the truth of shared understandings and experiences and to insist that forms of radical refusal rather than adaptation and resignation are not only possible but necessary. The internet complex functions as an unending announcement of its indispensability and of the insignificance of whatever life remains unassim unassimilable to its protocols. Its omnipresence and embeddedness within almost every sphere of personal and institutional activity makes any notion of its impermanence or post-capitalist marginalization seem unthinkable. But this impression marks a collective failure of imagination in its passive acceptance of numbing online routines as synonymous with living. Good Lord. It is unthinkable only to the extent that our desires and our bonds with other people and species have been wounded and incapacitated. So there is the section. It's the whole, and I think that is that's the that's the argument. Book, it's the book. It's the purpose of the book. And I noticed as you were reading, Michael, that and I guess this is the only thing we'll do to, to sort of cheat. Um, it's unclear what the referent is for those first couple of sentences. So let's just note this: the referent in those first doom laden sentences is this term that he uses midway through and that he'll return that query will return to and it's this idea of the internet complex. complex so what he means by that term is one of the things uh it's the referent for that like i said the doom laden opening sentences even though it's not referenced but explain and explaining what the internet complex means um and what it you know what it consists of is one of the points, one of the aims of the book. Okay. So anything you want to say? Uh, yeah, so do you want to read the, the sentences again, or do you want to make a opening comment or we, we're going to take this sentence by sentence and say something? Well, else? I think we should certainly take it sentence by sentence, but when he, I think, I think that it's not a bad idea to maybe just linger for a yes. moment preemptively here on what it is that he means by the internet right. complex. Right. Let's do it. So this is not just a critique of the internet. This is a critique right. of the entire infrastructure that makes up yes. the internet. Right. So we're not just talking about social media. We're not talking about emails. We're not talking about streaming media. We're also talking about the massive server complexes, right? We're talking about the cell phone towers. We're talking about all of the physical. Oh, yeah. Right. Right. So do you, I mean, yes. I just. Right, right. Yes. Yeah, no, I mean, did you, do we want to go any further with internet complex or because. Yeah, I, I'd add something or, yeah. or, or but no, I, I no, thought no. you were still going. So. Uh, I'll add something to it. Um, the internet complex relates to his big argument, which is that, and we're going to return, you know, I think we will return to this argument because he does. His bigger argument here is, his bigger argument, and what makes the internet the internet complex, is that he has a totalizing argument about the internet. Because he feels the internet works to totalizing effect. So mm -hmm. what's the totalizing effect? It doesn't matter whether we're talking about TikTok, cell towers, Instagram, streaming on Netflix, or the dark web. Right. Um, and in fact, one of the things, one of the very interesting insights in this first chapter is that he... Query very effectively dismantles this idea that, well, there's the internet and there's the good internet, the little right. healthy, uh, happy internet that allows me to buy things so, and that allows me to stream things. And there's the dark web. Ooh, and that the good people end up, um, you know, if you're a good citizen, you will end up on the, the good uh, internet. You'll end up on the good internet and you will never go to the dark internet. 
so let me let me wrap this up just by sort of explaining um, how this relates to the internet complex. One of the things that Crary is really intent on doing is puncturing our myths that the internet offers us variety of experiences and a variety of um, either political experiences or just anything like that, that the internet works to a totalizing effect in creating a market. So, so let, that is the internet complex. I so I want to ask you a question about the internet complex as a concept. And yes. it, it seems as, as, as we're talking about it, that you're looking at this as not just the totality of the pieces that are present when we think of the internet from mm -hmm. any person, any, from any particular angle, mm -hmm. but we're also maybe talking about the means of engagement and the effects that this has with us. So this is both a physical, tangible thing. It is both a, it, at the same time that it is an intangible thing, at the same time that it is a series of emotional reactions right. to things. Right. I'm wondering if we could, you know, this is funny because we had, before we started recording, we had mentioned about how all of our, 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 our people are mentioned in this book, it seems at some point or another. Would this be in line then, do you think, with you know his understanding of internet complex with, is, is this the McLuhan moment? where we see the medium is is the message or the mass well, agent I, I, I that think... this whole th this whole thing that he's talking about that is internet connect you know pardon the the, the obvious uh that, that I don't even want to say is th is this all of the pieces of the internet that come to create all of the associations within the internet I mean is this is is this thing that he's calling the complex the medium and the message? That is a wonderful question. And um, I, and my answer, and I'll try to explain it, see if I can explain it. And I found, I thought we were gonna have to have a break in the episode and I hated that, but uh, we don't because I was, I, I think there is a passage that um, I wanted to read Impartial answer to your question. So I think the question is two. Mm -hmm. um, I would say that the internet complex is very, or has a double, the, the answer I think has a doubled aspect, or I want to put it that way. And then I'd love to hear your comment on it. So the first thing to say is uh, the internet complex is a totality. It's a network of diverse parts parts in Crary's view, that is working to a single effect. So yes, in answer to your question, um, a partial yes in answer to your question, uh, is this the return of McLuhan? Although McLuhan is one of our heroes who is not mentioned, uh, but I think he is, he's not mentioned explicitly, unlike Simone Weil and um, Bernard Stiegler and other, other figures that we have talked about. McLuhan isn't explicitly name dropped, but I think he is very much assumed. Uh, uh, I think that the argument, the specific argument that the medium, in this case, the internet, dictates the message or, or, or dictates content, i.e., in this case, the furthering of market ideology and the furthering of market relations, not even the ideology, but like furthering of market relations. I think that's implicit in one of the statements, and not just this one statement on page 13, and I'll read this, that this is why, um, and, and this statement I, I marked in, you know, he doesn't name check McLuhan in this paragraph, but I think he's absolutely thinking McLuhan, as you were saying. Um, so here, here it is. Um, an, an electoral politics based around involving, he's talking about basically internet activism, right? Mm -hmm. Internet politics. Mm -hmm. And I'm picking up 13. An electoral politics based around involving people through internet solicitation, as some center-left parties in Europe have attempted, inevitably produces a depoliticization mm -hmm. of those whose participation is the ostensible goal. Look at the next sentence. Politics in scare quotes. 
This is why I mark. Let me read that sentence and I'll yeah. get back to McLuhan. Politics becomes in this new internet, you know, through the internet engine, right. becomes continuous with the same gestures and keystrokes. Nifty, nifty there, Jonathan. Same gestures and keystrokes, the same recourse to surveys and opinion polls that strengthens one integration into the routines of internet complex, consumerism, self-administration. Those are the effects of the internet complex. So here's what I wrote in the margins in that passage. Uh, politics in the, there is no such thing as politics through the internet. This is the McLuhan-esque. Right. The buying that, you know, if you have politics through the internet, the medium becomes the message. It's internet politics. And therefore, it has the same effect as any other practice within the internet complex, that totality, that total ensemble of networks. So let me it maybe has the effects of consumerism and self-control, self-surveillance so industry. Let me let me ask this because I yeah. think I, I think that um does that make sense? It makes yeah. perfect sense. So let me try something on to here to yeah, see yeah. if we're we're having the same conversation. He's arguing essentially, and we're going to tease this out as we go through the text yeah, more, yeah. but that what's happening with, and we'll use politics here as the example, right? That it has the internet, the complex, the internet complex seems to have sort of a homogenizing effect where your party affiliation or your agenda or your outrage or your whatever it is, is sort of normalized, not normalized, it is homogenized to fit into your uh, your your point of engagement, the internet. So it's in the, essentially it 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 norms all things. It, it right. everything becomes right. Right. this habitual process that in, it's yeah that 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 strips it essentially right. of its power. Right. Okay. So now uh, that we've but, but can I but I, I want to go back to your initial question though because you right. were saying is this McLuhan? So in one sense, emphatically, emphatically, yes. But I think this is worth mentioning. There's one way in which Crary is doing something McLuhan didn't do, in that all the you know, and I'm I'm glad I looked at the other passage because I I think it will uh, this hopefully will make what I'm about to say a little bit more compelling. You know, notice the notice those key words of self-manipulation or self-management or self-administration and also consumerism. I mean, and, and in fact, I'm going to, I said I was going to make a statement, but I guess I'm going to ask you a question re regarding your question. Um, with McClellan, I think that there was some relative autonomy and we saw that Raymond Williams didn't like this about McClellan. Um, but there was some relative autonomy that that McLuhan seemed to be giving to technology over and above capitalism and markets. And I think Crary really is having none of that. So I'm I'm trying to mark a difference, or I'm asking you whether or not I'm right in trying to mark a difference between McLuhan and Crary. That McLuhan is is interested, I think, first and foremost in imagining the ways that technology per se uh, affects our psychologies and recreates our subjectivities. He's, he's, he's not a fool. He realized there is an, a market system. But with Crary, I think, you know, the internet complex is first and foremost a market. So it, it fits in with an anti-capitalist critique that I don't necessarily see in McLuhan. That's, that's, well, that was my so I yeah. think I see it a little bit differently, uh -huh. but I don't think that my version of this is incompatible because I think that what Crary is saying is not internet bad. I think what he's saying is hmm. internet as it's currently configured is, and, and the, the, no, let me check that. Inter the internet complex as uh -huh. it's currently as it currently functions is devastating in right, virtually right. all regards but he's not saying that it's 
in and of itself bad. He's saying that the way that it works right now is bad. See, I I mean, I could be totally off here, but I feel like Crary is arguing, hey, we need to burn it down and rebuild it differently. Mm. He's not saying, I think, we need to burn it down and you know, all things local need to stay local and all things distant need to invoke uh, a, a greater degree of time. I don't know that I see an answer for it in terms of he says, well, we need to build it this way or that way. Mm -hmm. But I think he's arguing that it is the internet complex that is problematic, not the internet itself. And so to that end, uh, uh, I think that I can look at this as simpatico with McLuhan if we say essentially this version of it, this complex, right? Mm -hmm. Allowing that it could be built differently. Mm -hmm. This internet complex gives us this, you know, capitalist centric market um, message. Hold that thought. Yeah. I want to, I want to, I want to say, and I'll try and say it as simply as I can. I differ with you. Mm -hmm. I think it's going to be a productive, dis and I'm going to state my difference of your opinion. I love the fact that you articulated your opinion. So with such clarity, it's going to allow me, I hope, to avoid obscurity and do the same. And you will hear, our listeners will hear, that there is a difference. But this is going to be productive because what I think, I, I think it's great that we're having this point of disagreement. And now we're going to go to that paragraph mm -hmm. and we're going to see, we're going to see where we go. I mean, I think it will be very interesting for both of us. Okay. For us. So, so. Just to reiterate, Michael, say it real quickly. You're thinking internet complex bad, but it's possible I'm saying, to burn it I, down. Hold on, hold on. I don't. I'm not. Okay, no, no. I'm saying Crary is saying. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, I'm, right. Go ahead. Go ahead. That the internet complex is bad, but mm -hmm. I'm not convinced that he's saying that Let's that's the same down. thing as saying. Oh no, I think he wants to burn it to the ground. And he in does fact, want to burn it. I think he's okay. arguing in a way that. It's going to burn to the ground one way or another, because if we don't <laughs> burn it to the ground world. and reconfigure it, it is a self-destructive mechanism. Right, right. Okay. But I think, I think he's, he's arguing that what, if we can burn it to the ground before it burns everything, right. that there's that, that these connective technologies are not bad if they're done differently that provoke or prompt different responses different we'll say non 24 7 ish interaction beautiful okay and so that's wonderfully stated i'll try to state mine my position my reading of query um with equal succinctness and here's my reading i agree with you the internet complex is bad it is going to burn down and he would love to help it burn down or bring it down. Right. Or it burns everybody down right. before we have the scorched earth in the title. But my different reading is this, that he absolutely does not want to put anything back up that resembles anything like we would call the internet. I think that he feels that most everything in the internet is tainted by the brush of the internet complex. And so um, it becomes, so far at least, now we haven't read the, finished the book, but in this first chapter, it seems that, it, it, I'll, I'll put it this way, it, I, I cannot imagine an internet that comes back after the internet complex gets burned down or burns everything down. Yeah. Uh, so, but this is, well, no, I don't want you to agree with me and I don't want to disagree with you. I just wanted to mark that position yeah. and I wanted you to mark the position. Now let's read the paragraph again that we thought was so wonderfully All right. uh, illustrative. And so we'll, we'll go, we'll go. I'm going to tenuously say I'm sticking to my guns. Yeah, we know right. we're both sticking to guns. Yeah. So we'll start it again. What, let's go just one sentence at a time. We'll see where this gets us. This book is aligned with a tradition of social pamphleteering that aims to give voice to what is experienced in common 
to what is known or partly known in common, but is negated by an overpowering barrage of messages that insist on the unalterability of our administered lives. Can I take a pass at, uh, and then you afterwards, you know, absolutely. I'll take a pass at it, interpreting a- this? Absolutely. Thank God we mentioned about the internet complex, because I think it's going to make it easier to yep. sort of clock. Yep. This. Okay. Uh, what's going on here? We all know the internet complex is bad. And why? Because we have a common experience of its badness. But here's our problem. The internet complex is so totalizing that we that to interact with it, we are constantly, this is, I think, the part where, you know, he's referencing when he, or that he's designating with these words. Uh, what we all know in common is negated by an overpowering barrage of messages from the same internet complex. Correct. We insist on the unalterability of our administered by the internet complex. Right. So um, this... In this one sentence, we have an example of the deep impasse we find ourselves. We all know with our lived experience that the internet complex is driving us batty. But the problem is the internet complex tells us at every moment we need to get an update. And we're interested in the update. And there's a possibility to buy something. And so there's an overpowering barrage of messages that whittle around at our common experience and our common knowledge of that experience. So I'm, I'm torn here. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, this is a profoundly cynical sentence. Cynical. Now, wait, 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 but cynicism means that he's saying one thing, but he doesn't really mean it. Don't you think he means it? No, I, 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 mm. I mean, cynical in the sense that, there is he is so committed oh, to okay. the evil of the internet the the negativity of the internet that well, that it's so ne- i mean negative basically this this sentence is full of negation well so here's the question right yeah well i didn't mean to interrupt you no no it, no no it, no, it, no. It it's, it's we're we're fine we're fine okay so aims to give voice to what is experienced in common to what is known or partly known in common, right? So we agree. So he, he's arguing that we have this common experience of the we internet know complex it sucks from our daily lives. We're frustrated, but I have a hard time buying that there really is a common experience necessarily. I think there are certainly points of commonality. Oh. Okay, but that insist on the unalterability of our administered lives. I am going to refuse to don. I'm going to refuse to go to the dark side on this. Okay. Uh, And when I say cynical, it's this last part, right? The unalterability of our administered lives. Yes. We are fed so many versions of ourselves. I, I, it's like, I look at this sentence and I have this weird sort of fight clubby kind of moment, right? Where, it's like, this is what you're told to do. This is what you're told to you know, be. This is how you're like the rules for our existence are laid out for us. That's fine. Right. And I'm not in a position where I want to disagree with his conclusions wholesale, but I, I, I wonder how it's possible. Like we don't need to know something to experience something or to be affected by it, right? That's, we, we, we can be little unknowing pawns in the game. But I find it very, and maybe I just find it depressing, but insist on the unalterability of our administered lives. This seems to me to be making an argument that, and I think this is what he's doing. I'm just not sure that I can buy it. Mm -hmm. that if you remove the internet complex, yes, we are left with nothing. That this is what administers our lives. This is. You're, 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 you're left with something. You're left with us. You're left with the community. But I think you, you didn't mean that you meant 
that if you remove the internet, that we the internet complex. The right? internet that's what we're talking about here. Yeah. Right. I the, so and negated by the overpowering barrages of messages that insist yeah. on the unalterability of our administered lives. Yeah. 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 I, you know, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I I look at that and I I get where he's going. Right. That we are put on a, a a track of understanding that pushes us into the marketplace, right? That is going to encourage us to strive in these ways, be in these ways, that is going to sort of self-correct to keep us back should we wander. And like, I, I get it. Um, it just, I don't know. Well, I, I, let me see. I guess I'm having a little bit of a difficulty figuring out, but maybe not that much of a difficulty. I have a sense of what your, I'm trying to figure out, I, I'm sounding like a, a, a psychoanalyst. I wanna figure out what's the point of resistance in the passage. And it seems like what you're resisting is this idea that we can't step aside from the barrage of messages and have a clear thought. Am yeah. I wrong? No, oh, I think that's no. it. I think well, that's, that's well it. articulated. Okay. No, okay. All right. No, I, I like it. I like that. Maybe that's our final comment on that sentence. And I'm, I think that's a really worthwhile remark to make on that sentence. Okay. Well, let's move on to the second one. Many people. Well, let, let's nope. articulate it before. I, I just want you to articulate it, or I'm going to try to, art, I'll articulate it and you correct me. Because I, I, cause I, it's too important, I think, for us to, to stop and just move on. Uh, what you're taking issue, if I understand you correctly, is really this overpowering barrage of messages. You're not denying that there is a barrage of messages. But it seems like you're resisting the idea about the overpowering well, barrage. Well, yes, and. The disempowering barrage. Yes, and. I, yes, and that it is so pervasive as to be total. Okay. All right. All right. And maybe, maybe what I'm saying is, you know, so, that at some point there should, it just seems intuitive to me that there should be some faction, some section, some subset yeah. that is able to exist outside of this in some form. Okay. okay. I like that. Uh, so, you know, that's a really interesting mark. I just want to mark that because I think it's a real interesting argument that um, Crary, and, and it may be symptomatic of Crary's prose, not just in this book, yeah, but also in 24-7, this idea that a kind of fatalism. Yeah, in, and you know what? It could, be, it, it could yeah. be that if I'm right, that's worse than if I'm wrong, because then that puts power brokers in charge that are consciously pulling strings to manipulate yeah. the rest i i don't know but it seems so there's a kind of fatalism in. i mean what you're diagnosing if i understand you right and, and you know correct me here i'm just sort yeah, of yeah, working yeah. through it but it sounds like what you're resisting is this notion that that we have fully administered lives that we have technology that definitely has subliminal effects on you know what it is it's life. but it, it's the lack of agency I find, it, lack, I find yeah, exactly. it terrifying yeah. to feel like there is a total lack of agency. Okay. And maybe maybe it's the terror that that's 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 pushing me there and it's overriding a rational realization that no, this is a thing. But okay, yes. I, I'm glad you flagged that. Let's okay. let's move on. All right. Many people on a daily basis have a visceral grasp of the immiseration of their lives and hopes, but may only have a hesitant awareness of how widely their insights are shared with others. May I? Please, of course you may. Okay. Of course you may. This is, uh, I mean, I, I, my, my, my cap off. Now to, you're hating him. Do I sense now you hate the guy? No, you're hating just, Crary. He's well, not. It, it, turd, Michael look, turd. you know what? <laughs> I admire, if you're going to go, then go. And this man is not backing down. So, hey, internet, get off my world. Get off my lawn. So many people on a daily basis have a visceral grasp of the immiseration of their lives and hopes, but may only have a hesitant awareness of how widely their insights are shared with others. It's all 
going to hell. Everything, this is my translation here, right? Like many people. And we know daily. It. We know it. And we know it. We know it. We know that we are on the Titanic and it's going down. And that's our shared. So uh, that's our shared awareness, but we we don't realize how shared that apocalyptic awareness is. May is only have a hesitant awareness. So it's like, wow, things yeah. are, and I'm trying to watch my language here. Things are really bad. Uh -huh. They might be bad over there too. We have a hesitant awareness that you may feel as alienated as I feel in the face of this. Yeah. Right. Yeah. This hesitant awareness. Now, Michael, I, I don't want to, are you, I, I sense you were about to comment. No, I want to, I'm going to sort of bite my tongue for a second. I have a thought, but I want to see where you go with this. Well, I was going to do the contrarian thing actually and defend this sentence. I, and, how to say this? Um, I do sense that for a variety of, uh, of, with, for a variety of reasons, I don't think just simply the internet or the internet complex, but I think the internet complex, because we believe in McLuhan, the internet complex does filter and transform or mediate literally a lot of these experiences, but I do sense and and i'm sad to see this in students as well you know i do have this i do feel that a lot of people have an apocalyptic feeling see i and, don't see that and an awareness and that they feel the things have they're spinning out of control and they're afraid to say to other people, how much they feel that things are spinning out of control. And I think, I think actually he articulates a pathos that I, I don't think is wrong. But, you know, I'm not going to push on it. I mean, this is my subjective impression. But if I, I do think that seems to, maybe that, maybe that's only speaking for me. No, I, I but, okay. So he said, so the first two words of the sentence are many people. Not all people, yeah, many right, people. Right. I'm fine with the many people. I just, and I don't, I don't take issue with this. I just find it to be an incredibly, what, uh, an incredibly dark observation. And unfortunately, perhaps it's a truth one, right? I think many people. I guess I was seeing the truthful aspect of it. I mean, I'm thinking, I mean, I most guess people it, I know, and I know you, I, I mean, we're not going to we're not going to get overtly political here, but I think most people across the spectrum of political opinions have some anxiety in relation to this next election. I think only those people who have ever had a sense of control or have a concept of what mm -hmm. control might look like are going to feel this way. There are a lot of people who live fully reactive lives mm -hmm. who for whom the notion of a level of control that is stabilizing mm -hmm. is just anathema to their world it's 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 inconceivable mm -hmm. that they literally just react mm -hmm. and it it is a, a a terrible uh place to be but i think that a lot of people unknowingly exist in that space. And I think that the only thing that makes it tolerable mm -hmm. is the fact that you don't realize where you are. Okay. So we, in our own way, <laughs> uh, he said something dark and I said something dark and now you said something I've, dark. So maybe yeah, we should okay. move on. <laughs> this is happy times. Pour yourself a drink, folks. <laughs> My goal here is not to present a nuanced theoretical analysis, but in a time of emergency, to affirm the truth of shared understandings and experiences and to insist that forms of radical refusal rather than adaptation and resignation are not only possible, but necessary. And I think wow, this gets us here. This is a big sentence. This you gets us to, to the meat of first. where we are so far. Yeah, go first. Go first, please. Okay, so... Time of emergency, 
affirm the truth of shared understandings and experiences, right? Fine. We can agree that these are things that exist. And insist that forms of radical refusal rather than, rather than adaptation and resignation are not only possible but necessary. So here we are talking about the internet complex again. Indeed and I are. suppose and our and the the shared understanding and experience is our discontent with the internet complex. Our engagements with the internet complex. Indeed, yes? indeed, indeed. So I think that one of the sticking points for the two of us here is going to be related to the subject object sort of uh, how, how we position subject and object here. Okay. All right. So All right. insist that forms of radical refusal on behalf of us, those engaged with the internet complex rather than adaptation and resignation are not only possible but necessary. He is saying that we need a radical refusal of the status quo, that our means of engagement, our points of engagement, the nature of our engagements do not need to change, and we do not need to settle for them. We need to refuse them. Okay, now there's a couple ways, and he's saying that this is uh, are not only possible, but necessary. So he is saying, look, it is not only possible for us to do this, but this is a thing we must do. And if we don't do it, we end up down the scorched earth path here where everything burns down. Good that the internet complex burns down. Bad that we burn with it, right? So he's okay. saying that what needs to happen, we do not need to adapt to this. So this is not a case of saying, well, you'll get used to it. Uh, and we can change the way that we engage to some positive end. And he's not saying, well, you'll get used to it. Just resign yourself to it. This is what it needs to be. Okay. He's saying that a refusal, but in this refusal, the question that does not get answered here mm -hmm. is what is the nature of the refusal? So this gets us back to our point earlier, right? right. I think it is fine to say that, mm -hmm. look, what's working, what, what's happening isn't working. And I don't want to get used to it. And I don't want to try and twist one or two things. The very nature of this is a problem. But equally problematic is the fact that this is how communication, this is how the dissemination of information, this is the vehicle that we have, right? So to use the vehicle metaphor here, if we're all on this magic school bus taking us from here to there, and he says, look, <clears throat> You have to refuse the school bus, okay? We're not going to say, well, we'll get used to it. We're not going to say, well, it sucks, but I'm going to ride it. We have to refuse this. We can walk, right? Or we could take the whole damn bus apart, build ourselves a different vehicle, and go in a different vehicle. Got it. My understanding wow. is not that he is advocating for walking, right? It's nice, but it's untenable. It would not work. And uh, we are back to our point of disagreement earlier. Correct. And that's a good place to be because I think, let, and and I, I liked your re-articulation of your claim. It's very, very good. I'm going to, I'll try and re-articulate my claim. Uh, and I'm, I'm noticing, uh, and the clarity of your articulation is making me retreat a little bit. So kudos to you. But I, I, I would say this, I'll just present this less as a claim than my own, perhaps dissatisfaction with query. Mm -hmm. Let's use your metaphor, because I think that was a good one. He doesn't want you to walk necessarily. What he wants you to do is to rebuild the bus. Yes. Okay. And then rather than say, I have a different claim I want to make in this stakes or a stake different claim that i want to stake i guess i would say this that it is very hard for me in reading this book prairie doesn't make it easy for me at least to imagine what a redesign of the internet complex could possibly look like correct and that right there is one of my great frustrations with this 
I think, and we talked about this a bit beforehand. I don't mean to, do you have more? I don't want to derail you here. No, I mean, that's it. Because you, you made me realize when the way you put it, that I don't know if I have a disagreement with you or Crary. Mm -hmm. It's more of a frustration with his general arguments, with the arguments he presents, is that he's so effective at demolishing, uh, demolishing the ways in which the internet offers us these points of difference and these varieties of experience. And then he basically demystifies us and shows us the ways the internet reinforces consumerism or market relations. Um, so that he makes it very difficult to imagine what the radical refusal would look like, yes. except burn down the bus and make sure you walk, MFR. Yes. Walk. And that's, and that's, that's, as I said, that's the great frustration, right? Like, okay, I, I am compelled to accept that there are problems. I am compelled to accept that these problems are significant. I am compelled to believe that the locus of these problems is in the internet complex. But I'm grateful for the term, even you yes. know. Now, now that we have this this conversation, I'm more grateful for his key word. I like that idea of talking about. I think you there is some value in talking about the internet as an internet complex, as a set of activities that are different, different ensemble of activities, but they might be working to a singular effect. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but so. The, but then the question that I really struggle with, and this happens to me a lot, is, okay, so what would you have me do? And refusal is an unsatisfying solution. Refusal in and of itself is an unsatisfying solution. I cannot sit on the floor and stare at something all day and call that a productive refusal. It is impossible for me to wrap my mind around how that is agency worth embracing i don't see it you know going back to uh my personal hero uh Giannis varifakis mm -hmm. my national countryman hero uh my folk hero right um you know one of the things i don't know he i think he did this in an interview i watched and it wasn't so it wasn't explicit in the text but um you know he is very clear he very clearly demarcates, you know, he very clearly says at certain points, at least in this interview, I, I, I don't know if he, maybe in the whole of techno-feudalism, he makes this argument, but in the interview I, I watched, Farifakis makes very clear that there's techno-feudalism, there are the ways in which technology reinforces um, uh, Economic structures or modes of economic de domination that are closer to feudalism than they are to capitalism, right? But at the same time, he's very clear. He said, I do not want to get rid of technology. This is not an, a Luddite argument. This is not an anti. So, like for Varifakis, it, it's very easy. I mean, I'd like to hear him talk and write more about this, but in his own mind, he does not think his critique of techno feudalism ne needs to mean a root and branch needs to lead to a radical refusal of mediation. Right? Uh, I'm not so sure about about that inquiry. Well, I think the problem lies in the fact that Crary's problem is a total problem; that it is all reduced to the same point right it's like it, so so the 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 thing that came up to me earlier you know a while back we had, we had read latour and we were talking about actor network theory and the way that networks work okay so if you think of the internet complex as a network right an incredibly complex network an actor network theory as different agents in the network are reconfigured right as they are as this as 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 the nature as the structure of the of the network changes right then the outputs or the effectiveness of the network changes and so you can look at 
making productive change, or at the very least, watching changes happen. With Crary, when we look at the internet complex, if and I'm going to use the network as a metaphor here. If you look at the internet complex as a network, it doesn't matter the arrangement of the actors. It doesn't matter how you stack it together. It yes, all the, reduces to doom. It the, always the, goes. It is a zero sum game. It becomes a complex. It becomes the internet complex. Yeah. And that's the problem is that there's no, there's no way out of this that I see other than annihilation. And that is something I just can't, I, I, as I said, when we started this, I can't wrap my head around that. This is my problem. I have to imagine that somewhere there's a version of this that can be that, that can be built or configured or connected that produces something better and this is like a, as he's got it yes there's no hope you have to you you have to nuke it right but i don't in th this is where sometimes i think theory becomes problematic is you have to be able to apply it and i'm not you sure know, part, part of it you know and what we read earlier remember he doesn't think this is a theory book uh i mean in his mind there's something different going on in this book i mean there's learning in it and he has scholarly references but he's not trying to do a theoretical argument conceptual argument he's writing a pamphlet in a time of emergency so there's there are a lot of appeals to pathos and to rhetorical, you know, to he wants to persuade us about things. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I I don't know if the problem is theory. Maybe the problem is a lack of theory. Maybe, Maybe the problem might be a lack of theory, you know, Maybe. actually. That, um, because he is so intent on moving us to uh, moving us. You know, I think there's a lot of appeals to pathos here. And maybe, I mean, those those arguments tend to fall apart under scrutiny so maybe that's what i'm i'm struggling maybe with that's here. what you're yeah I, I i don't know if it's about theory okay um why don't we celebrate and just uh i i think we've sort of gotten it the uh to the nub of the book Let, let's so, go i think this wanna, next one is, is maybe just you know swinging the hammer one more time let's this this, this okay. one okay the internet complex functions as an unending announcement of its indispensability and of the insignificance of whatever life remains unassimilable to its protocols. Internet complex is in love with itself. You want to right. keep on going. And if you can't, if, and this, this yeah. gets us back to Stiegler earlier, 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 right? That if you can't be a part of this 24 seven and Creary earlier as well, this is part of his prior argument. You are, you, yeah, you will be moved out. You're moved out. Uh, it's omnipresence and embeddedness within almost every sphere of personal and institutional activity makes any notion of its impermanence or post-capitalist marginalization seem unthinkable. And that's the problem. But he, he wants to move us to understand that, no, we can engage in acts of radical refusal. Well, he's saying he's saying that it's impossible to imagine this with imagine the world or our existence without this. Mm -hmm. But then he's turning around and saying, but we must, but we must. Yes. You know, I think that's right. Okay. I think that's right. Uh, but this impression marks a collective failure imagination. So doctors Falk and Rapici, you are unimaginative dolts because you cannot think of this well, in its passive acceptance of numbing on, no, I'm gonna stick with that. In its passive acceptance of numbing online routines as synonymous with living. So we can't see beyond this because we are so wrapped in this that what you think of is light. So this is what is this the matrix? No, he feels sorry for us. No, read that last sentence. We'll wrap this up here. Impression. That last sentence because I think he he I mean, yes, it's the matrix, but there's pathos here again. Read that last sentence. <laughs> okay, so this impression, right, that we cannot, that there is nothing out, that that, that this will never fail. Uh -huh. This impression marks a collective failure of imagination uh -huh. in its passive acceptance of numbing online routines as synonymous with living. Yeah, but go to the last sentence. It is unthinkable only to the extent 
that our desires and our bonds with other people and species have been wounded and incapacitated. Okay, let me let me gloss that. There there is a hope, there is a pathos in it, but there's also a hope. He's saying it is unthinkable, but he doesn't believe it's unthinkable. He thinks we can think it. It's only unthinkable to the extent that we have been wounded in our relationships to the internet complex. And so we're experiencing uh, this is the pathos he yep. feels for us. He he feels we have been wounded by our experience and we've had our imaginations stunted by our by the online filter, by the internet complex. But here I think is the hope in it for him that if we if we get if we finally articulate our very Guy de Boer. If we finally articulate our desires, and also if we reactivate, and I think this is something that can only happen in real time, not in virtual spaces. If we revivify, I'm reading him here, our bonds with other people, then we're going to have the hope. We'll get our hope back. That's, That's great. The hope. That's great. So I love that. I'm going to jump on board and buy that, but I'm going to do it with a giant asterisk here. Okay. okay. At a certain point, we existed in a state that was pre-internet complex. Right? Yes. Okay. Correct. And then just to, it's, it's, it, this is a little messy, but, and then Google came along. <laughs> and then there was Google. Okay. And then Google comes along. Shh. And as we sort of dipped our toes into Google, we had, we were still tethered to the real world. And Google was this new thing. So I may be wildly oversimplifying this, but I think mm -hmm. that the answer is either going to make me feel pretty good about where I've been putting my plant, my flag here, or maybe it's going to make me move my flag. Mm -hmm. As we started using Google mm. and as we started buying stuff on Amazon, mm -hmm. right? Early days, it didn't kill us. It didn't immediately put us in this place. Mm -hmm. It was at some point, mm -hmm. the wholesale acceptance of a digitization of our lived experience and the abdication of the flesh and blood connections that Crary so badly wants us to reestablish. It was that moment where we tipped too far, where we hit a crisis point. This didn't happen all at once. And so I don't understand why that requires then. Granted, I, I, I'm, I'm on board. We've tipped beyond a certain point of stability. We've tipped beyond a certain point that has put us in crisis. Hmm. But isn't it possible that there's a place where we can exist in a space that still makes, because there is good in the internet complex. There is value in the internet complex. It is not uh, the democratizing force that we felt in the early days with the Arab Spring, right? It is not, Twitter didn't save the world, okay? Um, I think anybody who's paying attention can clearly see that, right? And the answers that we're looking for are not on social media. Like, I get it, okay? And sure, porn is a problem, okay? Like, I I, I get all, all, all these arguments. Speaking for you. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> anyway okay <laughs> yeah i'm gonna move beyond that light um, relate yes light, um, you know a little, little bit of light really a little bit of levity here's good levity, um, a little levity. but certainly there's a there was a place where we existed before we tipped where these things did improve mm. and there's a place where there was added value and that's why i'm still sort of balking at this idea that it 
I love the way you articulated this, but I think I have a very simple question for you. And it's not a, you know, I'm okay. It's not a rhetorical question. I'm, I have, I'm, I'm going to have to think about the answer too. I've spent the past hour prepping myself to be wrong. So I'm good. No, no, this isn't about, I don't, I, I don't think, I think you made all these great insights here. This is not about rightness or wrongness. And I'm certainly not saying, uh, and I like, I very much like, the way you just articulated it in talking about tipping points and gradual processes. And I think sort of implied in what you were saying is this idea that uh, the query, query kind of makes it sound is that as soon as you set up uh, TikTok, it's like end of the world, end world scenario. Or and you Google, can't go back. Google, and you can't yes. go back. So so I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm, so I'm with you out there. I'm, I'm certainly not taking issue with the way you formulated it. And I think there's something very important in the way you formulated it in talking about that temporal element and sort of question Crary's temporal, temporalization of it, temporal scheme in which he puts it. But I got a simple question for you. And I'm I, I ask it, I would I'm I'm thinking of the answer myself. I don't know the answer. But like, okay, so you talk about the good of the internet. This is not rhetorical. What is the good of the internet? What is the good? So what is that good moment? What is that thing you don't want to lose? Is it just, what is it? And I don't mean you. I mean, yeah, no, 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 no. I get it. I get thing, it. What so, is the thing we don't want to lose? Okay. So, so what is it? What is the it? Good, what do we want? The good we news. We want communication. Isn't, it, isn't that what we want? Not necessarily. Or not necessarily. Okay. Not necessarily. So the good want? news is, the good news is, I, I saw this question. Is. I saw this question coming down the tracks. The, okay. The yeah. bad news is I don't know that I have fully satisfying answer, but I think about um, from, from an academic perspective, okay. what's the good of the internet? The archive. If we look at the internet as an archive, there's a tremendous amount of value here. Okay. And so this is, this is, you know, uh, Maybe, Maybe this is Adorno saying, do. hey, well, the good news about the record, right, is that it's going to save us from future people screwing the screwing theater up, right? Like we're not going to this, <laughs> this, this at least this is this is yeah. going to give us our moment yeah. in time. Yeah. OK. Yeah. Um, and can you have a non digitized archive? Got certainly right. Well, there's there's this existed forever beforehand, forever. but the access to the archive not for everybody okay but i think that we exist in a world where there's this tendency to say look if it's not a completely democratic thing if somebody gets excluded then it's bad and i'm not trying to be anti-democratic but i'm also going to argue that something doesn't need to be fully avail available or freely available in order to have value. Could it have more value? Perhaps. Could it be a problem? Perhaps. Right? But I think the easiest answer that I feel safe with is an archive. Uh, is an archive. So we like the internet for the same reason we like media, which is going back to the pharmacon and going back to Phaedrus, right? Right. It helps us remember shit. Right. Now, now the argument also exists that it relieves us of the obligation uh, uh, to remember yeah. things. Right, right. And therefore, it is bad. Okay? But but, oh, it, but the pharmacon is both, right? That's the, that's yes. the wonderful thing about Derrida and Stiegler yes. saving the Plato argument. It's but both. I think if you're going to say, well, look, burn it all down. It's not <laughs> pharmacological enough. Maybe no. that's maybe that's our end point. Maybe that's our end point. I mean, what do you think? What is that? That's that's my answer. No, I think that's my end point uh, as well. In, in that, or no, well, I'm adding, but maybe you were coming up with it, the language of the pharmacon. But I think we were both Very much using the language. But I think, I think that's I think that's where I land. In that archives communication. I was calling it communication, but I like your instantiation. I like your example better. The archive. 
That's one of the things the internet gets us. And I think that Crary devalues it. And if I, I sense that Crary might say, possibly, that, well, archive isn't good enough. Archive is dehumanizing. And then I think this is where we both seem to be landing. Media has always been about archiving. Mm -hmm. It always has been. Mm -hmm. um, and if we go back to the platonic debates over literacy or in writing and alphabets, then, you know, now Plato wanted, used his term, or Socrates, Plato Socrates right, used right. the term pharmacon to describe writing. And, but, you know, I, I guess we are, you and I are post Deridian, Stieglerian revisionists of the pharmacon argument, but arguably it's there implicit in Plato that media is good and bad simultaneously and Crary's problem and, and the insufficiency or inadequacies that we seem to be feeling is that he doesn't want, let a pharmacon be a pharmacon. And I think that's it. I'm not, I don't think this is- He doesn't want to be a pharmacon. I don't, I think that this position is compatible with 90% of his argument. Right. It's just right. that lat, like, I don't think you need but to see, go- the wonderful thing about the pharmacon is that it's both. Yes. It's poison. Yes. It's a cure. That's it's both, right? And Plato wanted to harness that ambiguity. And I, I think it's a great insight that Derrida slash Stiegler say, no, that's what it is. It's a pharmacon. It's poison. And the problem with Prairie is that it's all a poison. It's not, he's not pharmacological enough. Jonathan Crary, pharmacons are gonna pharmacon. Let it be. Let it be. I think that's it. Barry, good job. Good job. You did good work tonight, sir. Haters gonna hate. <laughs> I'm not, I'm no longer cool gonna enough. Pharmacon. I'm no longer cool enough to have this conversation. <laughs> Barry, this was a fun one. This was a fun, and I, I will say, as, as my sort of little parting nod here, I, I do find the arguments about the uh, divisive nature of the internet. You know, I'd referred to his argument as sort of being a, a Tower of Babel kind of argument. Mm -hmm. I really find it compelling. It is interesting. It is worth thinking about. I just don't think that we have to go scorched earth for the solution. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we might return to have uh, one more go on Jonathan Crary. So we'll revisit some of these issues, possibly. That'll work. And um, and this is a good place for us to end. Thank you again, Michael, for uh, a great discussion. Appreciate oh, Barry, it. thank you. This was fun. Thanks for listening to the Critical Media Studies Podcast. To find out more about the show, check out our webpage at criticalmediastudiespodcast.com.